My first encounter with David Ayer was at his house. And he said, <laughs> he was like, you know, I don't want to just do a superhero movie, man. I want them to be human beings, you know? I want it to be rooted in some truth. I worked really hard to create a grounded film so you could feel like you could drive down the street and look down an alley and see Deadshot doing his business. Or pass Harley Quinn, you know, in another car with Joker. Which may not be a good thing. <laughs> in this very dark, gritty world that could almost be reality, it doesn't seem as surreal as some of those other movies you see. I have a vision in my head, and my job is to explain and translate these things I see in my mind into things that can be sewn, built, painted. A great collaborator was Oliver Scholl, the set designer. He pulled me in directions I didn't want to go, and I pulled him in directions he didn't want to go, and the end result is spectacular. Superhero stories are inherently fantastic, but the approach was very realistic. Sometimes even downplaying elements, where normally you would have gone like a bit more shiny, to say, no, we're not gonna go that way, we're gonna stay very grounded with it. Welcome to Bell Ray Special Security Bank. Here to assist you in any way. Bell Rev was a design that Oliver and David came up with, and of course it's set in the swamp, but there's so many different ways that you can execute that. Hey! You get it! David had friends that worked in prison and got reference material from them, down to the layout of the security table and what would be on the screens. Really the minutia of everything. And that kind of authenticity, and that's a real testament to David's process and wanting to make sure there really isn't any detail that's not too important, because they're all important. We're going live with Task Force X, pull them. David uses this phrase a lot, chasing the real. And from the beginning, he said, I don't want them in supervillain, superhero suits. He was very interested in how do we find that person in the reality of our world and then heighten it and distill the iconography of the comic book characters into this reality. Mom Finney more. Kate Hawley, the costume designer, she had a lot of different potential examples from the different characters because of the comic and it was really important for David to give them a sense of grittiness so they had that sense that you could find them out on the street. I'm beautiful. Yeah, you are. There are so many intricate little nuances that people have spent a really long time working on and thinking about, so I appreciate the time they take and all of it's incorporated into her costume, her hair, her makeup, her props. They're an incredible team. One of the guys that turned out to be a real treasure for me in the journey of putting this movie together is a gentleman by the name of Rob Kautz, who's a Toronto tattoo artist. It was simply going to be, hey, help me come up with some tattoo ideas for these characters. But in working with him, in these conversations with him, that the characters sort of grew and evolved. A big part of what I do is listening to people. And I always search for keywords whether it's a specific area or a time period or a color palette, that he's really keen on giving very specific keywords. But if it needs tweaking, he'll tell you specifically. Or he'll just get his hands dirty and he'll just do it. He'll make a little sketch because he knows what he likes and he knows what he doesn't like. Each tattoo on everybody has its own specific story. You know, there's Enchantress who has these very specific tribal tattoos and hex signs and ancient magic runes from grimoires and things like that. Everything with its own specific sort of language and history. I mean, the process was kind of interesting. It started off with a little bit of tattoos and they started growing. It was like everywhere. My entire body was covered with tattoos. And during sort of that like process of trying to find the complete look of the character, I was like, yeah, the more I don't look like me, the better it's going to be. Hey, what's that crap on your face? Does it wash off? I'm so scared people are going to go get rotten tattooed on their cheek now. <laughs> yeah, girls, you got the glove. Oh, no. We all ended up like giving each other tattoos. You want it traced or freehand? <laughs> freehand. Freehand. Oh. freehand. Here it goes. Here we go. Here we go. You want me to roll up with I'm your nervous. camera there? It was like Harley's tattoo parlor. <laughs> like that size? <laughs> like that? Sure. <laughs> All right, that's good enough. Yeah? Yeah. That's good. Yeah! Yeah! That's the wife. Wait, 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 we gotta clean it. I think with the hands, adding, adding more. 
Yeah, like just some random surfaces or something. So, what is this? Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, that's. that's uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what we do. The EAs, or these uh, eyes of the adversary, are these beings, but what do these things look like? So we were really in the beginning kind of fumbling around, right? You throw stuff up on the wall and see what sticks. One day, you know, David Ayer came in. He was like, God, I had this insane dream last night. And he took a marker and he went to the whiteboard and he started drawing. And he drew the craziest looking thing. It was this kind of humanoid figure, but it was a head covered with eyeballs. And he's like, that's what they look like. That drawing, after trying literally dozens of other designs, that's what we ended up going with. Yeah. So you guys then tactically move into this space. If David Ayer is going to do a single comic book film, Suicide Squad is it, because he's got that military background, he has the knowledge of how it would work, and he brings that side of it, how a mission would actually lay out. So all of that stuff feels very, very real and authentic because it is authentic. These guys have six, these guys are have blocks. A couple of buddies of mine who are you know, former Navy SEALs came in to help me out with the show and to train the actors in weapons manipulations and small arms tactics so that when people are doing things on camera, they're doing them correctly. A lot of movies these days, action sequences can just be filled with explosions just for an explosion's sake. But in this movie, everything is more surgical like a spec ops unit and how that spec ops unit would conduct their actions on an objective. We're definitely outmanned, and we have to navigate that, knowing we're gonna be running out of rounds really quick. So it's about surviving that, it's about being resourceful, and I think a lot of people will appreciate that. You never lose ground, you're always on the offense, you're always attacking. David makes sure the set stays populated with experts and everything that you could possibly have a question about. There were things that David did together with each department head that clearly defined the characters, and I think one of the strongest elements of the film is how defined the characters are. And he has a very interesting way of doing his cast rehearsals. There was a huge character prep for this movie. You know, we all got in a room together and we worked probably for about a month, but it was really diving in and understanding these characters. We all had to rehearse, improvise, we'd use the script and we'd go away from the script. And this process is team building in a way because everybody has to be vulnerable in front of the rest of the group. I'll just try to get your personal. <laughs> I knew you'd come through. And then at the end of all these like ups and downs of the process you go through, you end up just having this like insane trust. I'd do anything. I'd go in any direction in a scene that he told me to. I have like a trust room that I have never found in any other work relationship. When you see this guy coming, you start backing up. You can't rehearse too much because no matter how much you rehearse, it's still gonna be a surprise on set. But that's where the magic comes from. And that's where you then get the freedom to start ad-libbing and adding the humor and adding the life because now they're in character. Get the hands up! Hey, I'm cooperating! This is me being cool. Hold your fire! Taser, taser! Hold your fire! The importance David gave that, again, is just unheard of, and that's why I think this movie has heart, because he cares about the characters. Let's shoot it. Let's do it. All right. All your work, how it comes together into the frame that the camera sees, it's really high quality work. It's really spectacular when you guys are coming. You don't like that angle. The angle sucks, right? <laughs> you wanted to cut a little more shit. No, no, no. Then... It's perfect. Okay. <laughs> it's just a, an, odd, an odd angle choice. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs>